How's it going, YouTube? Thanks so much for checking in today. Today, we're gonna talk about what type of glass is best for soundproofing. So if you've been searching on the internet and thinking about a bunch of different options, I'm gonna break down the four types of glass that you could use, why each of them has some pros and cons, and hopefully give you a better understanding of which one I would recommend for building a soundproof studio. All right, before we jump into this video, I wanna let you know that I have a free soundproofing course below in the description. So if you wanna take a deeper dive into soundproofing, then definitely check out that free course. All right, let's jump into the video. So the first type of glass is float glass. Float glass is the type of glass you probably have in the windows in your home. It is really common. It is also known as annealed glass, and it can work for soundproofing, although there are a couple drawbacks. First, it doesn't have the right physical properties to make it the superior type of sound isolation product that you might want. Therefore, you need more of it. You need more mass, so you're going to have to get thicker, thicker pieces of glass to compete with better products that I'll mention later in this video. But it still is an option. The other benefit of it is that you can cut it on site and it's a little cheaper than other glass products out there. Annealed glass or float glass is an option, but it's not the best. The second type of glass we have is known as tempered glass. Now tempered glass is better at acoustic isolation than float glass, and it is something that I would recommend using in your studio. The downside to tempered glass is that if you nick it even a little bit, it can shatter into a ton, million little pieces. And this is actually one of the reasons it's used in doors that have glass in them. If you have a door with glass that is 18 inches from the floor, you technically need to use tempered glass so that if someone breaks it, it just shatters into a million little pieces and won't accidentally cut you and cause a big disaster. It is great for soundproofing. It is more expensive than float glass, and it can break easily. So it has these pros and a couple cons as well. The third type of glass that you can use is what's known as laminate glass. Laminate glass is probably the best product you can use for soundproofing. Also like tempered glass, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it is really, really good and I would highly recommend it. The way that laminate glass works is that it's two pieces of glass that are bonded together with a piece of plastic or PVB layer in between. This layer in between the glass actually helps with damping and makes it a superior acoustic isolation product to float glass, uh, otherwise known as annealed glass, like the type in your home. Laminate glass is also something that you might see in your car windshield because of its safety factor. Having that piece of PVB means that it won't shatter into a million pieces and will simply just crack, making it much more safe for driving around if you're in a crash or something like that. Laminate glass might be the best acoustic isolator of all the types of glass, making it the best for soundproofing. Because of that inner layer, that inner plastic layer, it actually helps with the coincidence effect, which I will talk about a little later in this video as well. The fourth option is plexiglass. Now, plexiglass is probably the worst option for soundproofing, but it does have some possible benefits for you. So I will first say that a lot of what I've learned is from Rodger Weiss from his book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros, which I'll have a link for that in the description below. But he does not recommend using plexiglass at all. And there's a couple good reasons for that. One is that it scratches really easily. Therefore, you could spend all this money building this amazing studio and then your windows get all scratched up and it's really hard to replace these soundproof windows once you've already put them in. So that is a huge drawback, and I agree with him on that. The other downside is plexiglass just doesn't weigh as much. It's made from a plastic acrylic material, therefore it doesn't have as much mass, and with soundproofing, mass is always our friend. So you're gonna need a whole lot more plexiglass to achieve the same amount of soundproofing as the other three types of glass I had mentioned before. Now the one positive, the pretty much the only positive that plexiglass has is that it's cheap. It's a lot cheaper. And so if you really, really are like, I want to use plexiglass, I want to save the money, it could still potentially work if you get the mass right. And we'll talk more about how to get the right thickness of glass 
after this as well. I will say that this website called Better Soundproofing had a lot of great reasons why plexiglass could potentially still work, even though they also agree that using tempered and laminate glass is gonna be far superior for soundproofing. I would say that if you're gonna use plexiglass at all, which I still don't technically recommend, use window grade plexiglass because it will help you with getting a stronger, better material than just regular old plexiglass. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how to get the right thicknesses of glass for your window. So in a soundproofing window situation, you're gonna have two pieces of glass. You're either gonna have a double wall system like I did in my studio where you're gonna have about a nine inch air gap from the outside to the inside wall, or you could have a hat channel system where you probably have a smaller air gap because you didn't build the second wall out. Nonetheless, you're still gonna have the distance of the wall, so you're gonna need an outside pane of glass and an inside pane of glass. I will note very quickly that the airspace between the pieces of glass does help significantly with soundproofing. So the larger the air gap, the more soundproofing you're gonna get. So having the double wall system is a benefit in the sense that you can get that large space between your pieces of glass. Now, Rodger Weiss in his book that I had recommended earlier has a formula for finding out what size glass or what weight of glass you should put on your windows. The basic idea is you wanna match the mass or the weight of your walls so that the window doesn't become a weak point in your wall, but actually becomes another piece of mass that fills in that gap or hole you just created by drilling through it. So to do that, we need to do a little bit of very basic math. So two layers of drywall, which is what I always recommend on the inside and the outside of your wall. If you're not, if you're building a studio like I did and you just have an outside wall with plywood and then hardy board or some sort of surface on the outside, you would wanna figure out the weight of that as well. But for these purposes, we're gonna say that we have two layers of drywall on the inside and two layers of drywall on the outside. The total weight of having four layers of drywall is gonna be 5.25 pounds per square foot. So we know that that is the mass we need to achieve with our windows. So if we look at float glass, the typical glass in your home, an eighth inch pane of float glass is only 1.65 pounds per square foot. So in order to get the correct weight on our outside pane of glass, we would need to have a half inch thick piece of annealed glass. So this would get our weight up to 6.56 pounds per square feet, which is greater than the amount we had on two layers of drywall on the outside. Now your second piece of glass should be at least a quarter of an inch thicker than your other piece of glass. So in this case, we had a half inch piece of float glass. We're gonna need to get a three quarter inch piece of float glass on the inside. That will put the weight on the inside piece to 9.84 pounds per square feet. So we have plenty of weight now, even more than the weight of our walls, which is totally fine. You wanna go over, you just don't wanna be under. So as you can see, you can still use float glass even though it doesn't have the greatest acoustic properties. Now, if you wanted to use two pieces of laminate glass, you could reduce the thickness because of the superior acoustic properties. You could get a 3 8 inch piece and a 5 8 inch piece of laminate glass and get the same acoustic properties. Now, this is what Rod Gervais recommends in his book. So it kind of gives you an explanation of how you can choose glass mainly based on weight. So the thing that I did is I went down to my local glass shop here in Nashville and I asked them what they would recommend for soundproof windows. Now the beauty of it being Nashville is they're like, oh yeah, we do this all the time. There's tons of studios in Nashville. So they had a system already in place that they used. So what we used is a 3 8 inch piece of tempered glass and a half inch piece of laminate glass. 
Now, you might be thinking, hey, there's not that quarter inch difference between the glasses, and that's true. This is what they recommended, and we're also using two different pieces of glass, and I'll explain in a second why there might be some benefit in using both tempered and laminate glass. Now, I will say it is a little bit more expensive than going with float glass and going with plexiglass and all that stuff, but one thing that I wanna drill home here with soundproofing is that if you're really worried about the budget, I highly recommend maybe you rethink doing this whole soundproofing thing in the first place. And I know that sounds harsh, but to do it right, you really wanna spend the money and do it right. Otherwise, you're gonna be left with a half-built product that's not doing what you wanted to do, and you'll have wasted some money anyways. So please take that advice and think about it because every time you cut, try to cut corners with soundproofing, it's gonna come back and hurt you later down the road and all those cut corners can add up to a less than ideal soundproof studio. All right, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So you could go with my option, which was just those two different pieces. And I'll say that my windows are perfectly soundproof. They are freaking amazing. They've never, I've never had a problem at all. If anything, my door is by far the weakest point in the studio and the windows are completely fine. They are rock solid. So if you want, just copy what I did. I think it's a great way to go. The other option is try to get those weights exactly right. If you use two layers of drywall with green glue, you essentially are getting a more massive wall by adding the green glue because you're having added benefits of soundproofing with that damping layer. And I know that sounds kind of confusing, but just to take that into effect, you might need slightly heavier glass than just the mass of the two layers of drywall. So keep that in mind, but I want to leave on this one last note about the coincidence effect. And this is something that is scientific and, and may be fascinating, but something that you don't need to really dwell on. But it is interesting when you're talking about the theory behind choosing the two different types of glass. Every type of material that we use for soundproofing has a critical frequency. And this is where the bending wavelengths of sound traveling through the actual material, in this case glass, matches the wavelength of the sound traveling through the air. So essentially when the sound hits the material, hits the glass, at certain frequencies, the critical frequency, the sound will pass more easily through that material than at other frequencies. And this is what's known as the coincidence effect. So with using two different layers of glass, you essentially are getting two different critical frequencies in the window. So sound that might easily pass through one pane of glass won't easily pass through the second pane of glass at the exact same frequency. Now I know that was a lot of science, but it's something to consider with this added benefit of using both tempered and laminate glass versus just two panes of tempered or two panes of laminate. All right, that was a lot of information, but I hope it was helpful. Again, if you are interested in learning more about soundproofing, I have a free soundproofing course down in the description. Please sign up. We have a wonderful community of people, and I would love to see you in the course. Again, we have a new video every Monday, so definitely check back in, subscribe, like, ring that bell, all the good things, and I hope to see you next week. All right, thanks so much for watching. Thank you.